About uh, 55 and a half million years ago, there's a period of time that is right at the very beginning of the Eocene epoch. Uh, it's early part of the age of mammals. It's after dinosaurs had gone extinct. And it's, it's a very interesting interval of geologic time for us because it's a period when there was very rapid global warming, very rapid climate change. The Bighorn Basin is one of the few places in the world that actually preserves this specific interval of time we're interested in, um, when there was global warming. We can use that as a way to try to understand the Earth's system, and it's an area where we have this uh, time period preserved in rocks that were on land. Right now we're, we're still in the early days, even though we've been studying this for a number of years, of, of uncovering enough fossils and enough chemical evidence to be able to figure out the riddle or the mystery story of what, of what the response was to this climate change. We want to see what happens when you have a major warming event that's caused by putting carbon into the atmosphere. It takes many, many thousands of years, really tens of thousands of years, or hundreds of thousands of years for that carbon to go through the cycle of being drawn out of the atmosphere, into the ocean, and then deposited as rock again. And that's, so it, its ultimate fate is that it will be deposited as rock again. That's where we get it from, right? We, we pull it out of the ground and we burn it. We know that there are likely to be big changes with future anthropogenic or human-induced global warming. And we'd like to have a better understanding of how that might play out in the future. And so going to the geologic past is one of our main tools for trying to understand that type of climate change. It's sort of like you're suddenly put in charge of an extremely complicated machine that uh, you don't know how it works. And, and there's, there's an operator's manual for the machine, and it's written in the rocks and the fossils that we study here. And you have to learn, you have to read the operator's manual. One thing that's amazing about this particular part of the Bighorn Basin is that we not only have the vertebrates preserves, but we also have plants preserved. We're able to see evidence for change in the fauna and in the flora. So there are ecological changes that, that appear to be responses to this big climate change. We can study the plants and the animals and the soils. It's the perfect place to try to combine all of those elements and get an idea of the whole ecosystem and how it responded to global warming. It's in many ways, it's, it's parallel to the global warming that people are causing today. It's relatively rapid, uh, although what we're doing now is probably 10 times more rapid than, than this Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum event. By looking back in time, we can understand the processes by which this Earth runs, and we can learn to maybe do the least harm by, uh, by acting as wisely as we can.